Hello, this is Franklin McMahon from Media Artist Secrets, MediaArtist.com. We're here at the Creative Cow, and we're going to talk about fonts. We're going to talk about how to get your fonts in tip-top shape using Photoshop. And uh, first thing we're going to do is just type in a word. Let's type in fonts. <laughs> and uh, there it is. Isn't that exciting? Um, so how's it look? If you're looking at it, you're saying, oh, it looks fine. It could actually be a little bit better. If you're a designer, you're probably looking at it and saying, yeah, we got to work on that. So uh, Photoshop actually does a pretty good job of automatically kerning. Kerning is adjusting the space in between the letters. And, it, you know, it doesn't do too bad of a, a job, but we're going to actually do it manually. And I suggest for anything, especially big letters or big headlines you're doing for DVD menus or design or, you know, multimedia, you definitely want to make sure that you can kern. So I'm just going to click in between the letters. I'm going to hold the Alt key in and use the arrow keys, left and right arrow keys, and we're just going to tighten those up. And again, you'll see it, it's just going to look better already, um, depending on how tight you want to go. And uh, there we go. So the word, um, we recognize words um, automatically. When we look at headlines, we don't always read the word, we subconsciously recognize the word, and it's easier to recognize a word if it's nicely kerned. If it's spaced out, you have to, your brain subconsciously has to work a little bit harder to pull the letters together and to recognize it, so an extra, it's an extra step. Also, if, you, if your kerning is off and your letters are apart, it can be visually uncomfortable, and you definitely don't want that. You want people to be comfy and looking at your stuff and saying, wow, that looks great. So, um, do some kerning. Uh, how much should you put? Well, that's a really tricky question. How much space should you put? Uh, unfortunately, there's no hard and fast, you know, way to say it. It's not like, well, you just put, you know, four pixels in between each letter because it's different because every letter is different. And uh, some designers use uh, grains of sand as a kind of a metaphor. You know, you, you fill up, you know, you imagine the same amount of sand is in between each letter, and that allows you to kind of think about how much space should be according to what the letters are. But um, basically, if you just do what I just did, that's 90% of it. If you just kind of, you know, push them together and, and keep them a lot tighter, the words will be a lot more recognizable, and you'll you'll be able to uh, make your words look a little better. Okay, let's go into bold. Now, let me show you how to double bold. Now, Arial has a um, a bold option, which is right there. Boom. So uh, very easy to do. Step backward. There's also faux bold, faux meaning fake, and that's right up here in your character palette. Faux bold will actually, now this will add bold to fonts that don't have bold. So if you have a font that doesn't have bold, you would use the faux. Now, what I'm suggesting to you is to double it up. Uh, we're going to step backwards, and basically I'm going to do this and apply the bold, and then I'm going to also apply the faux bold. So you get even uh, even more bold for your dollar. You get a little extra meaty like a steak. You get uh, a better bold. And uh, experiment with this, and especially if you want a really dramatic headline, you're doing something very big. It could be, like I said, for a DVD menu or design or something. And bold is good, but you want to go just that little extra step. Uh, definitely experiment with doubling up on the bold. Um, also, smoothing is pretty key, too. Um, let me scooch this up a bit. And I'm actually going to pick a font that is a little skinnier. Something like, oh, that's an interesting font. Um, the anti-aliasing, which is right down here. Experiment with these two because it'll definitely affect, especially with skinnier fonts, what your font looks like. Uh, there's different methods and different ways that Photoshop will do it, but definitely experiment that, and you can right-click and just boom, it is right there. Now, selecting fonts is another fun thing to do, and if you just click once on here, which is your drop-down as we've, as we've seen, um, if you just click once, select that, click once there, and then just use your arrow keys up and down, it will cycle directly through each font, and you'll be able to look at it and see. Whoa, that's pretty crazy. Um, you can even do it fairly fast, too. So, okay, that's not really a word. But anyway, thanks for trying. Thanks for playing. So this is a good way to kind of experiment and look at different um, fonts fairly quickly. So, again, cycle the up and down arrows on the keyboard, and you do it just by clicking once on the fonts. Okay, now the last thing we're going to do... Let's get back to civilization here. We'll go back to Arial, our, our 
favorite uh, font there. Oh, things are getting crazy. Now, we want to talk about styles. Um, and I have the styles palette pulled up. Chances are you may not use styles much because, you know, obviously when you got Photoshop, you're like, oh, I can drag and drop stuff. And my, doesn't that look like, you know, some sort of, you know, filter from perhaps 1996 or something. So, and you've got the drop shadows and stuff. And, oh, that's kind of frightening, actually. But let me tell you, uh, styles can really work to your advantage if you use them correctly. Now, if you uh, load in your styles, let's go to load styles. Now, there are some text effects you can check out. And I just loaded a bunch right in. And yes, some of them are kind of crazy, but if you go to some of the other ones, go to load, like some of the uh, photographic ones, which are much, much plainer and basically just kind of uh, keep it pretty basic and pretty simple, um, just like that. Now, you're probably saying, well, where, how do I make a style and where, where is this all coming from? Well, the style is right over here. I'm going to double click on this. And uh, this is basically just a cover, a color overlay. This is the basic color, very, very simple. Um, now, you might want to use styles for branding because if you have a certain color, that always has to be right on. You know, this is a, a color that's your brand, and you definitely want to keep it and save it and use it at a later date. Well, definitely, um, you know, investigate the styles. I'll show you how to save a style right here. Um, let's double click on that again. So let's do a color overlay and just say pink, which is just uh, going to be kind of nice. So now that's our brand. Our brand is pink. We want to use that all the time. And I'm just going to come up here and I'm going to put uh, cow pink. Pink cow would be kind of crazy. And click OK. So now as you're typing, as you're, you know, you're creating and doing different things and you want to grab that style, you merely drag it onto the font just like anything else. So this is very handy. Now you can also incorporate drop shadows. If I were to put a drop shadow in, let me add a drop shadow very simply and say I wanted to do cow pink drop shadow. Let's include all the blending and all the layering. And as you can see, now I have the option to go regular, or if I really want to go crazy, get the drop shadow in there. So it's very simple and very easy to do, and it also can help with, like I said, with your branding. If you have certain styles and certain ways you want to do things, definitely check out the styles. Again, you probably haven't used it too much because you probably played with some of the presets and they just got too crazy. But actually, you can load in. There's actually some really cool ones in here if you just click load and go through a lot of them. Um, and don't be afraid to alter them either. Just experiment and uh, play around with them. So fonts, you know, you definitely want to do your kerning and try the double bow, the double bold, and uh, do the faux uh, option which are always fun, and anti-aliasing. You definitely want to see which one works best. You can cycle through the fonts and do play with the styles because there's a lot you can actually um, experiment and save in the styles palette.